Hello, my name is Obsidiman, and this is my comprehensive Interstellar Rift tutorial. The series where we learn all about everything in the game, from the simple to the complex and beyond. In this video, we'll use some of the resources we made in the last video to get a small ship ready to fly. The first thing every ship needs is power. When you start out, you'll be using hydrogen to generate that power. To do this, your ship will need two things. At least one hydrogen generator, and at least one fuel tank to store your hydrogen. Generators will automatically draw fuel from tanks anywhere on a ship to make power. After purchasing or building a ship, the first thing you should do is use a cargo teleporter to send at least a small amount of fuel into one of the ship's tanks. That way, when you teleport over, the ship will already have at least a small amount of power. Now that the ship has some power to work with, let's grab some supplies and head over. We'll be taking one crate of oxygen, one crate of coolant, one crate of heated coolant, and a few crates of extra fuel. This ship's tank and generators are both in this room, but remember that tanks can be placed in any room on the ship, and the generators will still have access to the fuel. Let's use these extra hydrogen crates to top off our fuel. Select the crates and press E on the box slot on the fuel tank. If for any reason you need to remove fuel from the tank, you can press the single crate button at the bottom to take out one crate, or press the multiple crates button to take out as many crates as your inventory can hold. Let's put the fuel back in the tanks though, so we don't run out of power. To check how much fuel your ship currently has, open your grip with tab, and navigate to status, ship status. You can also quickly open the ship status page by pressing the X key. Now let's get our life support systems up and running. This device here is the life support machine. It provides your ship with breathable oxygen, and will also process the carbon dioxide you exhale, scrubbing the carbon out and putting it into crates. Every ship needs to have at least one of these life support machines on board, or else you'll eventually asphyxiate. Let's place our crate of oxygen on the left hand pedestal, which will lift up and start pumping oxygen throughout the ship. In order for a room to have oxygen pumped into it, you need to have at least one vent in the room. Above my head is a ceiling mounted vent. Here in this hallway we can see a wall mounted variant. If we take a look in the bridge, you'll notice it has a floor mounted vent. If you press X to open your ship status menu, you can see how much oxygen in total is currently in your ship's life support system, and also how much oxygen is present in the room you're currently in by percentage. To refill your life support system, press the down arrow button next to the oxygen meter. You can take off the current crate of oxygen and replace it with a full crate. In addition to refilling the life support's oxygen supply, you also have to periodically take out the carbon that accumulates in the filters. Just like with the oxygen, press the down arrow button next to the carbon meter, and you'll be able to remove the crate of carbon, and the filters will be purged. Now that you can breathe the air on your ship, let's make sure it's a comfortable temperature. This device is called the Thermal Extractor. It's used to heat up or cool down the air throughout your ship. This ship is technically small enough that it doesn't need a Thermal Extractor, so this one is mostly for demonstration purposes. Generally, a ship only needs to have a Thermal Extractor on board if its mass is greater than 50,000. Every room on your ship has its own temperature, which is affected by a few different factors. One of these factors is your ship's hull temperature, mainly based on your distance to the star found at the center of every star system. The closer your ship is to the star, the hotter the hull gets. Heat from the hull will seep into the rooms of your ship, bringing the air temperature up. Conversely, if your ship is far from the star, your hull temperature gets extremely cold. The rooms in your ship won't absorb enough heat from the hull, and your ship will become very chilly. Devices on board your ship will also warm up the room they're in, by producing waste heat when they operate. If you once again bring up the ship's stats menu with X, you can see your ship's hull temperature, measured in degrees Celsius, and the temperature of the room you're currently in, also in Celsius. To use the thermal extractor, first put some coolant as well as some heated coolant into the input slot on the left of the machine. For the thermal extractor to cool your ship properly, it also needs at least one heatsink to be installed in it. We'll go over how to get heatsinks in a future video, so for now, we'll use some I prepared earlier. Place them in one of the four slots in the center of the thermal extractor. 
When the temperature in the rooms on the ship gets too hot, the thermal extractor takes the heat from the rooms using the vents, just like the life support machine. The extracted heat is put into the internal heat buffer of the heat sinks, which are slowly cooled down by the coolant in the machine. If the heat buffer of the heat sinks completely fills up, any additional heat will cause them to take damage. And if they take enough damage, they will break and need to be replaced. If the temperature of the rooms in your ship drops too low, the thermal extractor will instead create heat by consuming heated coolant and pump that heat through the vents of your ship to keep it warm. Note that while using coolant turns it into heated coolant, using heated coolant simply consumes the resource. Both coolant and heated coolant can also be ejected from the device by pressing the eject button next to either of their meters. The ejected crate will show up in the output slot over on the right side of the machine. This side of the machine also has the temperature control panel, where you can monitor the temperature in every room on the ship. If you select a room, you can change what temperature you'd like it to be at, and also disable or enable any of the vents in the room. You can also adjust the target temperature for all the rooms on the ship by opening the ship-wide temperature menu. The temperature sliders will go up or down to the extreme ends of the safe temperature in the game but won't allow you to set a room to an unsafe temperature. You can also see the heat buffer of the device, which stores heat to be put into the installed heat sinks. With our fuel tanks full, life support pumping, and thermal extractor loaded, this little ship is now ready to fly. That brings us to the end of this episode. In the next one, we'll be looking at how to pilot a ship, including how to use a ship's warp drive to get around quickly within a star system. If there are any topics you'd like to see covered in a future video, leave your suggestion in a comment below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to catch the rest of the series.